Sam, I understand that you've been working with the Circle for Justice Innovations for over 10 years. What does CGI do and why are you so passionate about it? Man, th thank you for this question. And it, I am super passionate about it. And it's not something that I've gotten invited to talk about in a while. So I, I really just want to, first of all, appreciate you for doing the research and then giving space for this. This is important to me. A really influential part of my early work was teaching in juvenile prison and uh, getting to see up close the injustices of what's called the justice system in this country and also getting to study about that system at the same time because I was uh, an undergraduate and I was taking courses with a professor named Joy James who has just done really important and powerful scholarship in this area and so it really like the combination of having that like experience of working with young people who are literally, I would get to go home at the end of the day and they're being locked in. I have this one visceral memory that just popped in my head as I'm saying this to you too, of a day when I was leaving the facility and there had been a visit where a young man who was incarcerated there, his young child had come to see him. And it was time for them to, I was just seeing this in the kind of foyer of the building. It was time he had to go back to his unit, the young man who was incarcerated there. And the child was trying to run toward him and they had to stop the child and take him back to the unit. And it was just so clear to me that this is not how humans should be treated. It's not how we need to treat each other. It's not how any other country in the world treats people en masse the way it is it happens here. And that it's a form of racialized violence in this country and has been since the start of mass incarceration. And I wanted to do something about it. I recognize this becoming a little bit of a long answer, but I wanted to do something about it. And one of the things for me was like recognizing that folks who experience the system directly understand a lot of what needs to change and how to change it and should be honored in that way. And it can't be there's this, there's actually an organization called, well, anyway, I'll try to keep it a little short here. Basically what happened was I found out about a group called CJI, as you mentioned, John, that was, as far as I know, the only, at the time, at least the only giving circle, which means a circle of people who get, get together to give money to particular causes that was led by folks in equal parts, folks who were coming with a bunch of money and folks who were coming with a bunch of lived experience. So the circle was those two groups, folks who had directly experienced the impacts of the prison system by being incarcerated, or in some cases being family members, folks who had dedicated their life to activism in that area, and then folks who wanted to support making some change there. So basically, that's what the circle has been, and it's grown tremendously. So when we were beginning, we were giving a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, and in the last few years, it's grown to millions, as people have heard about the work. and contributed more and more resources. So there's now a bunch of programs within the larger circle for justice innovation. But the basic heart of it, which I think is really important and is something that philanthropy can learn a lot from, is to have a group of decision makers that includes people who have directly experienced the challenges of our society that we're trying to address. And that's what that group has always been incredibly dedicated to. It's incredibly complex work bringing everyone into a room together and trying to make these decisions mm. with consensus. And that's so much learning and growth happens in that room. Like the money that goes out has changed laws, has launched big, big efforts, campaigns, initiatives, produced documentaries, all these things. But also what happens for the people in the room has just been incredibly powerful. So some other time we could come on with a couple of people from the circle and have a whole conversation about it. I know I, that was a long answer, but I really value you giving me a little space to share about that work because it is extremely important to me. And like I said, I don't get to talk about it often. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank I just you. read a story this week that a fellow podcaster who does a show on kind of true crime actually unearthed evidence that on the podcast that set two prisoners who'd been incarcerated for over 25 years free because they were wrongly convicted. So lots of things we could discuss about our criminal justice system. But Hyundai, you also are involved in a great organization called the Street Code Academy that you co-founded. What do you do with that organization and how does it go about helping people? I love how you're conducting this. John, I just want to echo the gratitude attitude about the work that you've done beforehand. It gives a chance to speak to somebody's passions. I too is one of the reasons why Sam and I linked to do this book, right? We care 
about a vast amount of populations and people being able to live their full selves and human rights, civil rights, these are things that are important to us. And economic empowerment is one of those pieces and one major key to economic uh, empowerment in this day and age is your access and ability to leverage technology and the innovation economy. And so I fell into that, not as a technologist, not as somebody who practiced the innovation in a traditional sense, but somebody who wanted that right to be given to everyone equally. And so we started Street Code Academy that would focus on communities of color and providing what we call mindset, skills, and access to be able to participate in the innovation economy. So essentially that means we give free tech education to communities of color. We started out with 20 students. We've grown really fast. We've served over 3,000 last year, a seven-year organization. And um, yeah, we're based in East Palo Alto, California, right here in the middle of Silicon Valley. And we're housed by a beautiful community that thinks progressively about a lot of issues. And now it includes technology access. That's great. What a worthy cause both of you guys are both involved in. 